Hello everyone, welcome to Old School Chemistry. We're going to do another Alex topic. This one is understanding the basic descriptive vocabulary of molecules with functional groups. Now before we jump into this, I wanna give you a quick review of the background. There's a lot of vocabulary in this particular question. Uh, when they use the word chain, remember that is a string of carbons bonded together, cyclic, so a cyclical compound is going to be when we take that chain and we wrap it around on itself, almost like making a circle. This would be a hexane, there's six carbons. This would be a cyclohexane, six carbons wrapped around in that cyclical compound. Uh, skeletal structures, just want to remind you that the vertices, uh, this, the uh, lows and the highs, those indicate carbons and the hydrogens are understood. You can count the bonds for that carbon. In this case, it had two bonds and it's understood that there are enough hydrogens to bring that carbon to a total of four bonds. So this carbon, for example, would have two hydrogens. This carbon with one bond to a carbon would then have three hydrogens. Now the functional groups that we're going to see, you'll uh, be asked to write down methyl groups. That's just a CH3, that's a substituent. A substituent is what's going to be attached to your chain of carbons. So a methyl substituent, uh, that would be a CH3, uh, and I'll show you this, attached to it. Um, and then functional groups, aldehyde. The last carbon in the chain has a double bonded oxygen. A ketone is somewhere in the middle of that carbon chain. There's a double bonded oxygen. Carboxylic acid. At the very end of the carbon chain, you have a double bonded oxygen and an OH. Um, an amine, you're going to have your carbon chain and somewhere, it doesn't matter where, there's a nitrogen bonded to it. And then alcohol, somewhere in that carbon chain, there's an OH. So we're going to do several of these. Let's look at this particular uh, question, this first question. It says draw the skeletal, so the line structure, of a carboxylic acid. Okay, I'm going to highlight that. On this topic, they're going to give you a functional group um, with five carbons on the main chain and one methyl group. This has quite a bit happening. Now, you can put these anywhere you want, all right? You can draw this any way you want as long as you've got your five carbons, there's a carboxylic acid somewhere, and you've got a methyl group. So I start always with the carbons, five carbons, and this is a chain. So we will go, i use the purple, the purple, I think it's easier to see. We're going to have carbon one. Remember, when I touch the board, when I touch my paper, that's number one, the first carbon. So there's carbon one, two, three, four, five. Now we need to put a carboxylic acid on this. So that's at the very end, I have a double bonded oxygen. Remember, we always go away from the chain. So if I'm at the low point, the double bonded oxygen is going to go down, and then we'll have the alcohol, the OH. Together, that last carbon, double bonded oxygen, OH, that's our carboxylic acid. Now the methyl group, I can put anywhere. I could put a methyl group here, here, here. I can't put it on the end. Think about that for just a second. Why can't I put that on the end? If I put a methyl group there, it changes the chain to six. It changes this to a hexane rather than a pentane. I have to put the methyl group somewhere in the middle to make it a substituent. Uh, for example, I'm going to put it on this second, or, or this, uh, sec, what, my first peak, uh, and because I go away, there would be my one methyl. And again, I could put my one methyl group. I could put the methyl group here or here. It doesn't matter. Alex, when it grades you, is just going to be looking for those five carbons in the chain on either end. I could have put the carboxylic acid on this end, I could have started by going down rather than up, doesn't matter. Uh, and then that substituent, that methyl group, I could put it on any of those three carbons in the middle. Let's do another one together. So we'll erase this. Uh, and what you see here, you could have any combination of these. Some are harder, some are easier. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so on this one, it says draw the skeletal line structure of an amine. Okay, so I pull up in my head, that's the nitrogen, I can put that NH2 anywhere I want, with three carbons in the main chain and one methyl group. Okay, so this three carbons, that's where I'm going to start for my main chain, 
This time I'm going to go down. It doesn't matter. I touch my board, touch the paper. That's carbon one, two, three. Uh, for my amine, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the left-hand side. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to bring this down and put my, oops, my nitrogen. And I'll put my H2 right there. Oh, now the way Alex is coded, if you have an alcohol or an amine on the left-hand side, sorry, that nitrogen, there we go. On the left-hand side, you are going to flip that and put the H2, then the N. We just want to show explicitly that this carbon is bonded to the nitrogen. Uh, now my methyl group, I only have one option, one option. We can put our methyl group right there in the middle. If I put the methyl group on this end or on this end, it would change my chain from three carbons to four. Uh, because remember, a chain is going to be the longest continuous string of carbons. A substituent is going to be somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Okay, we'll erase that, see if we can maybe get another functional group here. Okay, this one. This is draw the skeletal structure of an aldehyde. Ooh, I like aldehydes. There's something uh, unusual. It's an exception for aldehydes. With two carbons in the main chain, no substituents. So no methyl groups on this. All right, we've got two carbons, and this is an aldehyde. So we're going to do, here's my first carbon. So the one, two. Now an aldehyde, remember, is the last carbon has a double bonded oxygen and a hydrogen. So here's my last carbon. I'm going to go away. Here's my double bonded oxygen. And then here's the exception on aldehydes. You draw the hydrogen. It's going to be the only time in our carbon chain that you draw that hydrogen. So there it is, draw that hydrogen. Now I could have done this the, um, I could have done it where I went down like that and I did my double bonded oxygen here and a hydrogen there. That's fine. It's the last carbon. As long as you're at the end of a chain, uh, you're going to be great. Uh, if they had cyclical, so let's pretend, okay, I'm just going to make one up for us, uh, that they say you have um, a cyclic six carbon. Okay, so we have six carbons that are cyclical. You would um, take your six carbons and wrap that around like a circle. In this case, it's going to be a hexagon shape. I would have one, two, three, four, five, actually, <laughs> I'm not terribly great at drawing. Five, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons right there. Maybe we have a ketone. The ketone, right there, we haven't seen a ketone yet. Double bonded oxygen anywhere in the middle. So I could put a ketone right there. If I had a methyl group, I could put a methyl group anywhere on that, okay. Very good. So proud of your hard work. Good job. Remember, if you haven't, please like and subscribe. And thank you for joining with me. Have a wonderful day.